A scarcity-based economy is the status quo of today. Because of the, the way human relations have evolved, and not everybody is provided for, there's a lot of suffering going on. In the absolute abundance of resources, namely rocks, sunlight, plants, water, from which all the wealth of the economy comes, their distribution to humans is, is very much corrupted and, and there's material deprivation going on on all these fronts, such that people are hungry, or in poverty, resource conflicts exist, and so forth. So post-scarcity would be where we're connected more closely to the natural resources from where all the wealth comes by the fact that we have the means, the tools, to, to transform those resources into the feedstocks of modern civilization. Open source ecology refers to the integration of human and natural ecosystems along the lines of open source principles. When we say open source, that means open collaboration, open sharing of development and ultimately of economically significant information. We're developing the Global Village construction set as a means to show that one, we can create a real community based on these technologies and achieve post-scarcity. The Global Village construction set is a set of 50 different industrial machines that allow for the easy fabrication of all the different products that it takes to create a small civilization with modern comforts. Everything from a tractor to a, an oven to a circuit maker. Tractors being such a fundamental device, uh, access to them should be easy to, to make survival simple. So we've decided to build out of necessity because our tractors, industrial tractors that we bought kept on breaking, we built our own to first do construction, in fact, and to do basic agriculture in, in the experiment of trying to recreate civilization from scratch. So we decided to build the most simple possible device, and to do that, you need a frame, and we decided to use an XYZ construction type of a frame with bolt together members and put on a power unit. Initially, we didn't do a removable power unit. We did hydraulics because they're versatile. And Soon it turned out, well, if we're going to have a power unit, why don't, why don't we design it such that it can be interchangeable using our hypermodularity concept? The power cube is a modular power source. It's an example of a power source that can be interchanged between various applications as opposed to be firmly attached to one device serving as a power source for one device. Its range of use is unlimited. The key to making it so versatile is that you're transmitting power from this power cube by means of hydraulics, which is hydraulic oil flowing in tubes, which therefore allows you to carry large amounts of power in a very flexible way by quick connect couplers that plug in from the power cube into the device that you're powering. Currently we're using petrochemical hydraulic fluid because that's the only thing that's available on the market. Now there also is available canola oil with additives as, an, as a biohydraulic fluid and that's something we can grow on the farm here with our combine and oil expression and have locally made hydraulic fluid. Combined with the local production of hydraulic motors and, and modern steam engines you can have a total resilient infrastructure for producing power compressed earth brick presses. We call it the liberator, as in liberating you from the main cost in your life, which is housing. If you have one of these machines, you can make bricks, which in principle can suffice to build an entire house, including roofing and flooring. Compressed earth brick, to my knowledge, is the only technique that's, that's rapid construction, requires minimal equipment, and can get you both natural and industrial scale building. It's driven by hydraulic power from a power cube, so you can stand a power cube alone. The, the basic design of the machine is, is a compression frame, so you start with that frame, which basically is this part from here to there, and the rest is everything that supports that compression. So you've got the secondary cylinder that moves a drawer in and out to load soil. You've got a huge hopper that can be loaded with a, with a tractor. We are the only operation or only CEB pressing operation that does this, which means a device that pulverizes and loads the soil in one step. If you use double CEB walls with straw bales in between, that's a hybrid CEB straw bale construction. That to me could perhaps be the next, uh, the next generation of housing for humanity. HabLab. 10 living unit arrangement, double CB walls, 3,000 square feet, and straw bale roof and walls. This relates to the technology of the Global Village construction set in that there's a tractor 
salt pulverizer CB press power cubes that are being used right now as we speak. There's another technology, the gasifier burner, that's going into this structure that's all all part of the technologies. Now you see in modern civilization we have run away, the technology base has totally run away. Instead of our lives being more based on leisure time where we can actually do things that are most meaningful and we can improve ourselves as people and learn to get along, we're struggling on basic resource scarcities. Our technology is so complicated it takes us so much time, so much energy to maintain it that you're back to the dog race. We're trying to see if that's changeable by reducing the technology to the most simple yet sufficient modular, Lego-like, people tech imaginable.